Thank you again, everyone. Uh, thank you, Lance. Uh, thanks for attending today's webinar on uh, virtualizing the code network. I hope everyone is uh, seeing the screen here. Um, Lance, is that all right? It is all good, Prasanna. I can see it um, clear. All right. Perfect. So um, we have a lot of uh, interesting content packed uh, for you today. Uh, but before we get into the topics for discussion today, I'm, I'm seeing that there are still, you know, a few people still trying to join in. In the meantime, everyone is trying to sign, sign in on board. Uh, let's quickly start with some market uh, dynamics, right, to set the stage uh, while people are signing in. Um, and a bit about the, uh, the state of the market. Um, you know, we are, we are all very well aware of this uh, service provider's role, uh, of, you know, in today's digital economy, right? Uh, that is, irrespective of fixed or mobile services, uh, this new digital economy, uh, which provides, uh, you know, lots and lots of, uh, some uh, analysts claim that it's trillion dollar opportunity for all the operators, right, across the world, of course, everybody have their own pie to share. Um, however, Along with these opportunities, there are also several challenges, right, that we have to address in our networks today. Uh, let's let's talk or let's talk about the first one, right? The, and the most relevant reason here today that is pressure on price and margins, right? That is uh, a situation uh, that is faced by almost all the operators for over a decade now, um, and and we are seeing revenue and the EBITDA margins are, are constantly under strong pressure in this market, right? Uh, and eventually the pressure uh, to protect the margin. Um, and also simultaneously uh, you know, introducing um, uh, new business models and, and, and new technologies in the network, which again will trigger the existing and uh, current uh, operations of the network to become even more complicated, right, uh, than what it was, what it is today. Um, and due to this, uh, you know, uh, we are noticing and lastly, that you know, we are noticing that there's exponentially changing consumption patterns of the subscribers, right? Um, so, with pressures on margins, new technologies, with new business models, staying relevant to today's consumers' uh, demands and um, and uh, regulatory implications, uh, we all can understand the relevance of uh, operations uh, uh, across the board, right? So, what are uh, some of the uh, the values and opportunities that our customers expect uh, expect with regards to fixed voice services, right? That is to continue to deliver high quality residential and, and business voice communication services and feature rich applications that's associated with that. Uh, whether it is providing a seamless voice connectivity uh, to residential users or providing a hosted unified uh, communication type of experience to your enterprise customers, right? Uh, with let's say things like collaboration tools, right? Uh, obviously, with this new COVID era, you know it might be temporary, right? Uh, which we all hope. And uh, working from home is a perfect example in terms of driving those values, right? Of the uh, of the consumer's consumption model uh, and delivering an uninterrupted, you know, experience across the board, right? Uh, and all these, uh, you know, existing services eventually drives up the opportunities in terms of reducing the capex spend. Uh, uh, in order for us to adapt into these, uh, you know, disruptive changes that we are talking about, right? And we have seen more and more operators have started increasing the capex spend uh, to drive uh, uh, these uh, technology innovations, and uh, you know, such as whether to modernize the network uh, or virtualizing the core infrastructure, which we'll be talking in a moment, or the ability to streamline the operations, right? That is to have the right software. Uh, and right tools and plays in the network uh, that can underpin everything from providing into invisibility of your operations, right, uh, for, and insights into your subscribers or customers experience, um, and eventually delivering the, uh, the, uh, the guaranteed consumer experience that's expected of your networks uh, uh, from your network today and, and possibly into tomorrow, right? And then when we talk about technology shift, you know, modernization, uh, of the uh, 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 modernization of the network and operations. Now we all know the highest priority for an operator, right, which is adapting cloud native or virtualized software only deployments. Um, and obviously eventually advancing these core network assets, right, what we have today in this context, 
uh, in our context, what you're talking today, and upgrading them to a virtual or 100% virtual infrastructure, right? So, Ribbon, uh, you know, we, uh, hundreds of network operators today uh, uh, that we that we work with use Ribbon's, uh, uh, you know, uh, fixed voice solutions and, and to be specific, uh, today is one of the key area we're going to be focusing on ribbon soft switch platform right that is to enable and offer uh, these fixed voice core solutions to residential and business customers uh, so we have enabled multiple applications and solutions that are uh, you know that I'm trying to highlight here one is uh, class 4 and 5 solutions uh, you know that is offering operators the ability to reuse the uh, existing legacy local access equipments or replacing, let's say, old TDM voice access equipments completely, right? Um, and and or to consolidate and modernize the network completely and provide a, a IP voice solutions directly, you know, either via fiber or a coax to the home or or to an office, right? To your enterprise customers. And similarly, we have tandem transit, international gateway, and interconnect solutions for TDM interconnect applications, right? And, and of course, another for IP interconnect application between operators, right? Um, and then we have a, a broadband wipe solution wherein we can provide you a hosted deployment options that is for you to deliver, let's say, voice over IP or voice over broadband services directly to your customer, right? Via fiber or a coax. Um, and then with our IMS and uh, uh, our IMS ready solutions, uh, you know, we can work with. Uh, with operators uh, to accelerate the deployment by eliminating the, let's say, the expenses uh, upfront, right, and complexity uh, on, on day one. So uh, what we mean by that is that, you know, we have IMS ready component, which is uh, including our application servers, our call controller or soft switches, uh, SPCs, media gateways, all the way to all the, uh, you know, the signaling elements, uh, which we have deployed in operators network uh, you know, uh, and uh, and with our products, the operators can first upgrade the network, right, and eventually migrate into all IMS uh, uh, kind of uh, deployment through software upgrades and configuration, right. And lastly, uh, you know, we have ribbon or similar products in your network, such as C20, um, uh, PSX, SPC gateways for your fixed voice, right, enabling you to offer the fixed voice services to your subscribers. Uh, you know, saying that we have solutions. Uh, that makes these operations more streamlined, right? Uh, uh, that is, with our analytics, we can offer into an insights across the fixed voice uh, network, uh, or or a single pane of glass deployment option, right? For it to work across uh, most of the operators here are fixed or mobile networks, right? Uh, and and uh, and we have security tools to protect your uh, voice network. Uh, and finally, within you know, uh, we can make use of these insights, right, and mitigate robocalls, um, uh, let's say from analytics, and with or without, we can mitigate robocalls or nuisance calling and fixed voice, right. So, most of these uh, applications, uh, you know, here are enabled uh, via our soft switch, right, or call controller. Uh, C20, which uh, some of you might uh, uh, you know may know, and our soft switch or core controller is the core uh, switching or services platform for millions of users, right, uh, across fixed and cable operators network. Um, uh, so what we will do in rest of this webinar is to provide you a snapshot on our new virtualized soft switch, that is virtual C20, and then talk about upgrade programs that you can get on board. Uh, followed by highlights on stir shaken, uh, robocall, nuisance call, uh, calling mitigation. Uh, again, some of these features are available in C20, uh, and of course our analytic solution to to wrap it up. Right. Uh, so with that, uh, my colleague here, Pete Strang, will take you through uh, some details on uh, virtualized uh, soft switch. Uh, so Pete, are we good? Uh, we are. Thank you, Prasanna. So the um, the ribbon virtual soft switch, right? So that's what we're here to talk about. Um, Prasanna already mentioned a, a couple of other uh, key products, let's say in the in the ribbon uh, lineup. 
you know, overall corporate wide, we've had an objective to virtualize practically all of our products where it's a, where it's appropriate. Some products such as um, gateways, right, line and trunk gateways that we use in our network transformation solutions uh, don't lend themselves to virtualization, but where products do, we have been pursuing that investment and making those available as software only solutions that um, our key customers or any of our customers can deploy um, in a hardware environment, some of them, sorry, hardware freedom environment, I meant to say, some of them in a NFB sort of open stack environment. So um, our virtual soft switch investment, it continues that, um, that corporate strategy. Um, we started this um, um, a good year and a half ago. It, uh, it took some uh, good upfront investment to, uh, to um, make the, what's called the call agent of the solution available in a virtual environment. And essentially, um, that was one of our key investments, taking the call agent and making that available on, um, on a virtual machine. So the strategy that we have pursued for virtualizing the C20 is uh, use, utilizing that sort of application virtual mas machine approach. It's not uh, OpenStack, not NFV. It is that uh, that virtual machine um, model that um, that we have used. So it is a solution that runs on um, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux um, host OS, and uh, and we are using KVM then as the hypervisor. We're looking at other hypervisor options in future as well. So. This is even just the first introduction of um, a ribbon virtual soft switch. And I, I refer to that more generally because this solution is going to apply, this solution applies more broadly um, across different markets and different environments than we, uh, than we saw previously with our sort of uh, application, our hardware application based um, C20 uh, solutions, right? So this solution, um, can scale much broader than uh, than um, what we have seen with uh, with previous uh, solutions, and subsequently, Ribbon had to position multiple um, soft switch applications depending on different markets or different regions. And our goal going forward is to address a broader range of markets and regions with a single uh, virtual soft switch. Um, so again, um, it is virtualized on uh, Red Hat Linux uh, version eight and uh, uses KVM hypervisor. So hardware freedom, what does hardware freedom really mean for us? Well, obviously, you know, it needs to run on an appropriate hardware platform still. So what Ribbon has done initially is uh, partnered with Dell, um, and we are using what's called the Dell R740 servers uh, to actually productize the solution in our lab environment. So that's the server that we use in our lab environments. And subsequently, we work. The, we have a reseller approach. We can make um, or provide uh, that Dell server platform to our customers. Anyone that's looking to take this uh, solution, we can provide the servers for you. So more of a out of the box type approach, or you can bring your own hardware. So of course, right. So if you have a data center environment and you're using particular servers in that data center environment, then this solution can deploy in that environment. Um, so long as it meets some of our hardware requirements. So we do have some, you know, uh, defined hardware requirements. We uh, can easily share that with anyone interested. I'm not going to go through that level of detail here today. But, um, you know, we have some uh, hardware requirements, meet those requirements, meet the uh, host OS, can easily deploy it on any of the, uh, uh, you know, a broad range of, of rack mount servers uh, that are available in the market today. Um, so beyond the call agent, all other elements, of course, of the C20 are now fully virtualized, right? So we've got uh, virtual machines hosting the call agent, hosting what we call the data manager, which is our OAM applications, essentially. Um, uh, the gateway controller, which is what uh, you know, manages the uh, endpoint gateways themselves. So we, um, we provide gateway controllers in a, in a particular VM, 10 gateway controllers per VM up to um, 10 gateway controller VM. So anyone that's familiar with past um, C20 applications, you can understand that that's a larger capacity than we've even offered in the past. So it can scale, the solution can scale. Really it comes down to gateway controllers and, a and SSTs that fall into play when we talk about how well a solution, um, or, or how to scale a C20 solution, sorry. Um, you, know, you can start with a single gateway controller all the way to 100 gateway controllers. You can start with a single SST all the way to four SSTs. And each of those SSTs 
um, actually can manage up to 100,000 simultaneous SIP sessions. So scales very easily from very small to very large. Uh, the application server has always been virtualized. Um, we've just repositioned it, or, or um, not repositioned, but made it available again on uh, RHEL 8 so that we have all of the solution here available on the same uh, host OS. Then, of course, we have various media servers, our MAS servers, our GMS servers in both uh, SIP and H248 environments. They're all virtualized again on the same platform. And then finally, uh, SP2000 and billing. The SP2000 is our um, signaling gateway on the uh, on the solution. Um, in the past, we've been able to uh, provide both SIGTRAN and TDMSS7 links. We can continue to do that. The SP2000 itself is for fully virtualized, um, supporting SIGTRAN uh, natively. And then, uh, should TDM links still be required, um, you know, as as they still are in, the, in in many environments today. We have a couple of different uh, options on how you can perhaps use existing gateways that you have in your environment and or introducing a new small gateway to host those TDM interfaces. So there's a lot of flexibility, in, again, in the regions that it can address um, and, the, uh, and the size of customer that it can address in those regions. Um, you know, as with most of our solutions in the past, geo survivability, always a key requirement. High availability, of course, always a key requirement. Um, so VMs in this environment get deployed across um, separate servers, right? So each VM is um, is replicated, of course, active and inactive VMs, or some of them are both uh, shared active-active, but we always replicate those across physical servers. So uh, that's one way of providing the uh, high availability. Um, geo survivability, we have a couple of options as to how uh, the solution gets deployed in a geo configuration. Uh, we've always offered a physical optical um, uh, ring option, which is uh, you know the most robust approach, has always been available for solutions that we've provided in the past. Um, we've introduced a new option today using a, a VPN approach where customers can uh, utilize a VPN and eliminate the need for sort of dedicated uh, optical environment um, for GEO. Um, OSS. Uh, just like a lot of solutions, we always maintain transparency, backward transparency, so uh, still has that full OSS transparency that customers are so used to with some of our with our solutions. Um, and uh, and then finally, of course, reusing gateways. So of course, you can always reuse as part of our strategy of being able to migrate. And as we're showing here, you know the three sort of um, key things that you do with the solution. You know, you can migrate legacy uh, switches, any of the switches that we're showing here and more. Um, of course, I guess the more are covered under the third parties here, but um, you can you can migrate um, switches onto, so essentially migrating lines and trunks onto an existing uh, on to an existing switch. You can upgrade, which is a new program we have, and I'll talk talk to that in a in a in a few slides here. Um, and then consolidate. Consolidate means collapsing more than one switch, right, obviously, onto a new C20. So there's a, a lot of options on how you can uh, transform your existing network um, into a virtualized environment using uh, using this new soft switch opportunity. Next slide, Prasanna. So efficiency, we talked about, you know, what is what is virtualizing a soft switch really offer, right? Um, we think some of the, the key three, sorry, some of the three key um, capabilities it offers is, is cost efficiency, flexible deployment options, and then investment protection, right? So on the efficiency side, you know, using multiple um, using multiple applications on a, on, a, on a smaller scale of hardware and being able to scale those applications in that environment. So I already spoke a little bit to, to scaling. Um, you know, that's one of the keys with the, with the virtual uh, soft switch solution is that you can take it from very small, so to, to very large, right? So um, it, it can scale from a tier one environment down to a small tier three or rural market type environment um, very efficiently. Uh, is um, you know, from our perspective, um, it uh, hosts uh, a broad range. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of history that comes with our investment in our knowledge space here. Um, I'm not sure I think um, Prasanna hit it. We've been the number one vendor in the soft switch and gateway environment for quite some time. And uh, we'll obviously continue to be so going into the future. At least that's our expectation. 
we continue to invest in this space as demonstrated by this new solution. But, um, you know, all that history, all that investment provides for an extensive um, availability of line types, trunk types, both TDM environments and, and IP environments, extensive features, extensive regulatory capabilities across different countries. Um, you know, and, and that's sort of demonstrated in our, in our own roadmaps these days. When you look at our roadmaps, there's less investment required in new features um, and, and, um, and new access types, let's say, and it's more around uh, interworking capabilities, SIP NNI type interfaces uh, between countries, especially in uh, in some of the EMEA countries. Um, you know, the, where where the environment is evolving, that's where our, our investment uh, takes us quite often. Uh, regulatory capabilities that are evolving, similar to um, you know, like stir shaken, um, like emergency services that are evolving to to next gen platforms, things of that nature. That's where we find our investment because the system is robust and complete as far as base requirements are concerned. Uh, flexible deployment options, so I mentioned hardware freedom. I mean, this is the, the really one of the keys, obviously, right, is you have, if you have a data center environment and or um, simply a server environment in your telco environment that, that, that you've been using for other applications, um, that's where we, we find the, uh, the solution will be very valuable to customers that want to continue to to streamline their applications on a on a smaller set of uh, hardware that they're managing in their environment. So um, we're we're flexible to that. Like I said, we have some hardware um, specification requirements. I think going forward, those might even become more flexible as uh, as solutions are deployed um, in the field. A new investment that we've also made is in automating automating deployment of the solution. Um, so we think this is going to be really valuable. Essentially, we're using something called Ansible. Um, and it takes, uh, as an example, our C20 solution, um, you know, some of the installation documentation, you know, 2,000 um, steps of, of, um, of install procedures, for instance, fully automated now, right? So we're taking that, that those steps that you would typically, you know, uh, extract data from uh, a spec book, and, and use that data to uh, to commission the switch. We're automating that functionality. We are able in our lab environment, for instance, once the spec book is complete, we can deploy a new virtual C20 in a matter of four hours or so. So it's very quick. Once you uh, once we get the uh, specifications defined, the procedures filled in, this tool can extract data automatically from that spec book. So it um, has dramatically reduced the time and cost to deploying a new system. On the investment protection side, again, um, this is one of our new investments. Uh, it's really about a, a per switch evolution to C20 is to uh, to be able to upgrade a CS2K to a C20, and I'll hit that uh, in a couple slides. So we'll move on, Prasanna. This is the um, upgrade um, capability. So. Um, before I get into the why, or sorry, what is it, why now kind of thing, why are we introducing something new for CS2Ks um, as it relates to C20s, right? And so there's obviously a lot of CS2000 um, soft switches in the, in the field today. All of the hardware, there are two key configurations of a CS2000. It comes in an XA core or a compact configuration. Um, all of the hardware on CS2Ks is now what we call manufactured discontinued, right? Where we stopped producing new hardware and subsequently stopped selling for new installs. So the CS2000, for instance, the XA core, the uh, initial platform for the CS2000, that product went manufactured discontinued in 2012. That was eight years ago at this point, right? Um, anyone that's familiar with, with ribbon and our history through GenBand and Nortel knows that we do everything we can to maintain hardware as long as we can beyond the manufactured discontinued date. Um, we set minimum targets of five years, but now we're approaching eight years on some of that hardware. And actually it's eight years on the last of that hardware, right? So it's really a situation where it's getting to the point where it's time to act now. There are a number of CS2Ks out there that have pursued the migration path to a C20, but there are a lot still remaining. Um, and so subsequently, we made this new capability, uh, we are making this new capability, have made it available to our customers to help them get off that legacy hardware environment 
and get on to something new. Future-proof their environment, protect you from, um, from, from catastrophic failures that, uh, that may be facing you given the status of the, uh, of the hardware. So really, I guess the message here on that one, why now? Uh, the hardware is, is approaching end of life. And by the way, end of life is, like we said, that's when we can no longer provide hardware support, hardware repair and return type functions for that hardware. All right, Persona, next slide then. So really, what is it? What is this upgrade option? It's hard to reflect maybe in a, uh, in a diagram, but if I talk about the existing option down below here, that's where we install a new C20. It can be an ACTA, MARMS platform, or now a virtual C20 as well, right? So we install a brand new switch, new, you know, a new silly code, if you may, the, the people are familiar with that term. So we install a brand new switch, and then we start migrating lines and trunks from other environments. It can be from, in this case, just given the example of the CS2000, right? So you start migrating um, other CS2000s to that switch. In some cases, um, you know, in many, in some cases, we can be collapsing multiple CS2Ks, so it might make sense. In some cases, customers have a fewer number of CS2Ks and or geographically dispersed, um, whatever, and, and migration itself is just isn't the right fit for all customers necessarily. And that's why we wanted to introduce this upgrade option. So what is an upgrade? It takes an existing switch and actually performs a hardware and software upgrade on all components and turns it into a virtual switch. So switch A um, is a CS2K. We go through the upgrade procedure and it is still switch A in the end, but now it is a virtual C20 in a virtualized environment. Um, and, um, and essentially the upgrade procedures is very much like upgrading the software. So if uh, folks are familiar with walking through a CS2K software upgrade procedure today, um, you know, you perform uh, an upgrade of a GVM in a maintenance window, you perform an upgrade of an SST in a maintenance window. With this program, we're going to upgrade that GVM in that maintenance window to the new R21 software release. And then at the same time, we move it out of that um, proprietary hardware or application-based hardware environment into the virtualized environment in that same maintenance window. And we're making this available. We have made it available when upgrading from all the way back from CVM 17. So there's four releases that you can come from and then perform an upgrade to a virtual C20 and land on release 21. So you can upgrade directly from CVM 17 and land on release 21 and have your switch now be in a fully virtualized environment. So the next slide, Prasanna, what does it take to get here, you know, and why, what are, what are some of the other values of it? Well, it really allows you to spread your investment across a period of time um, as you pursue some of the prerequisites and then eventually the upgrade itself. Um, so it starts with, you know, in some of the prerequisites environments or prerequisites themselves, sorry, um, upgrading the OAM components. Uh, to, to what's called GVM, right? We need, we need to do that. That's a sort of G, uh, CVM 17 starting point. Same thing with the application server. Um, this legacy server, some of you might be familiar with it, the CC3310. Um, I didn't even talk about that in the previous slide, talking about hardware. This is, you know, other people refer to it as the Langley HP server. Um, you know, the Langley HP server retired um, at the end of life. It is no longer repairable. Uh, in 2005. It's been five years already and those servers are still in some of these CS2K applications in the field today. So um, taking uh, the application server off that onto the MARMS, that's another sort of prerequisite. Some of the other events are replacing older technology like um, the TDM, um, the TDM side of a switch, when I say the TDM side. You know, anything that's hosted off of legacy T TDM networks um, gets migrated onto the IP side of a switch using what's called our G6 gateway. Um, so we move legacy TDM access points that need to be maintained or desire to be maintained onto a G6 ABI. We get rid of older gateways like the 15K and the 9K and migrate them onto newer solutions like our G9, G6. Um, the ERS 8600, others might know it as the CS LAN. So you need to eliminate the ES 8600 and introduce a new IP router. We actually don't eliminate it on the CS2K side. 
you just introduced the new IP router on the virtual C20 side when we install the new hardware. And then through the process of the upgrade, we actually swing everything. As, as everything gets swung on to the new virtualized environment, nothing eventually remains on the 8600 side, and you just turn that 8600 down eventually. Um, interestingly, here in this space as well, we have something to offer. Ribbon does. We uh, merged with a company called ECI, a packet, op packet and optical network um, company uh, in early 2020. Um, and subsequently, we now have a layer three switching solution to offer a game. We haven't had one for some time. Um, and we do have one again. It's called a Neptune router from ECI. And, uh, and we can make that available. It's uh, gone through our testing in our lab environment to, to be utilized in this upgrade procedure to replace the 8600. And then, so once you get some of these prerequisites completed, that's when you approach the point where you're ready to do the upgrade process. And then, as I mentioned, it's as simple, and it really is simple. It's as simple as, uh, as performing the um, software upgrade and moving the application into the virtual environment. Um, a good example even is um, that the applications like the SST gateway drawer and call agent um, you actually turn down the inactive unit in the uh, hardware proprietary side, turn up a new unit on the virtualized side with the R21 release, swapped, and now you're running that application in the virtual environment, right? So it's quite simple, um, a single maintenance window procedure for each of these key applications. Okay, next slide then, Prasanna. Um, best fit for your application. You know, this might not always be your best fit. We just wanted to highlight, you know, in fully virtualized solutions, we also have our application server that can be deployed in a standalone configuration, right? So C20, um, the application server is used as a uh, SIP line and SIP PBX gateway. We refer to that as, a, as, an, as an AS attached configuration when it's used in the C20 environment, but it can also be deployed in a standalone environment as well, all, all on its own. Uh, fits very well in um, in broadband broadband access environments and broadband um, environments that still have some TDM access points, but maybe not so many. And and some of those TDM access points can be rehomed on uh, SIP line gateways, for instance, like uh, our own G5 solution, for instance. Uh, so this is a very robust solution deployed uh, worldwide, deployed across tier one down to tier three. Um, I mentioned, uh, you know, it can be deployed with C20 attached as well. Um, and it can be used, and it is used in some cases as the uh, TAS in an IMS environment. So again, very flexible, provides a, a lot of options from a trunking perspective and from a, a lines features perspective, fully SIP environment um, that, um, that is available to customers as well. So obviously fully virtualized, that's why we're highlighting it here as well. So two full virtualized soft switch solutions um, now available, one with the uh, virtual C20, one with the uh, application server. And I'll just uh, wrap up then with uh, with this slide. It really just, you know, sort of summarizing options that are available, again, to our customers today, right? Virtual on the left and virtual on the right. Um, and, our, and our ongoing C20 ATCA solution um, down the center here. We actually um, still have C20 ATCA and MARMS available to the community. We have a number of customers that uh, obviously have been deploying those solutions or, and are interested in continuing to um, uh, deploy those solutions in their environment. So they're both um, you know, active and available today still as well. But on top of that, we now have the uh, virtual environment as well. Um, on the top here, we're highlighting uh, capacities. You know, it's a funny thing. I talked about scalability. But whenever we show slides like this, we always talk about maximum capacities, right? So yes, it can support a million subscriber lines. It can also support a very small, you know, it can be down to 5,000 or less lines as well, right? So um, it, uh, it scales up this high, right? To, uh, to a million lines, 4 million BHCA, um, up to 600,000 total trunks. 400,000 of them can be SIP, 400,000 of them can be ISIP. So, very similar capacity that we've experienced or that customers have experienced in the past with our C20 ATCA solution. Um, and, and I should highlight, these are sort of North American uh, even capacities. We expand beyond this in some of our um, international markets, 1.25 million even on the uh, subscriber lines. Um, and then, you know, really important here is, is identifying, you know, some of the boxes where we say, where does this fit well? And, uh, and you'll notice down on the right hand, uh, 
uh, corner, for instance, on the virtual C20, you know, fitting into the rural operator markets. We've also got the new CS2000 upgrade uh, capability that this offers, right? So those are some of the key um, extended capabilities where it sort of functionally deploys um, beyond our existing C20 solutions. And then, of course, over on the uh, AF side, um, same sort of thing, scales down, tier one down to tier three, um, and then, but more, more on the um, broadband environment. That's where it sort of fits better, perhaps. Uh, let me quickly get this through. So we understand that, you know, the customers today are facing a robocall or nuisance calling, right? Um, again, uh, nobody, are, you know, is ad are addressing phone calls anymore, right? Uh, that is, I'm sure most of you, including me, would agree as a phone user, we don't pick any calls that doesn't come either from our colleagues or friends or family members or anything without the names flashing in our caller ID, right? Uh, and what happened is actually we lost trust in, in regular voice service in general, period, right? Uh, so today, with regards to robocall or fraudulent calls that are being addressed, uh, you know, is by raising complaints to the regulators or legislators. Uh, so, for example, uh, in, in, in USA, the complaints are being raised to the, uh, let's say, uh, you know, regulatory bodies like FCC uh, uh, and similar, uh, you know, regulatory bodies in other countries, right? Uh, or typically the complaints could happen in federal or national government level, that is uh, legislature level, and then the laws are being, you know, passed passed on to tell the regulators like FCC to address this issue, right? Uh, and then they impose regulation to operators like us, uh, you know, who, who are here too, who are attending this webinar. So we get it and we understand this problem, right? So uh, what what we have is a solution offer that can, that's called Ribbon Call Trust for the operators to restore the customer trust uh, in, the, in the voice services offering that you're providing, right? Uh, so before we look into the, uh, the uh, Urban call trust solution, uh, the robocall, uh, uh, you know, mitigation or still shaken. Uh, these are some of the activities, uh, you know, happening across the world to address these regulatory or legislative concerns, right, regarding nuisance calling. So, for example, uh, in USA or Canada, still shaken is a regulatory requirement, and there's a strong deadline to implement this uh, in the operators network by June 30th, 2021, next year, right? Uh, and 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 in places like Australia and Singapore. Uh, they are defining the robocall mitigations, right, uh, 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 in terms of the requirements uh, itself, or, uh, you know, uh, they started trialing it, uh, right? And in countries like UK, France, UAE, and Saudi Arabia, <clears throat> they are looking at implementing us to shake and for within country, uh, you know, voice calls, and then uh, and then the robocall mitigation solution for outside or, or cross-country calls, right? So... With that, uh, let's let's take a quick look into the um, ribbon call trust solution, right? The offer and what it does. Uh, the solution, as you see here, offers three main functions. One is identity. Uh, this is where still shake and mostly plays on its own. Uh, however, it doesn't uh, give enough info on caller's reputation, right, or the trust context. Uh, and comes the uh, reputation, the second function, right, uh, which scores uh, user uh, and and makes sure that, uh, you know, this is someone uh, we can talk to. Uh, and then uh, uh, comes the trust context, the third function you see here, wherein it is really important to know which type of calls or robocalls or fraud, fraud attempts. Uh, and, for example, uh, you know, calls incoming on an international trunk, uh, let's say with caller ID, uh, from a valid local fixed number, again, it could be a bad actor trying to compromise that particular call, right? Um, so our ribbon product uh, or products in your network, uh, you know, such as PSX, SPC, uh, C20, GSX, or similar products, they all have features to support to shake uh, But for call signing and verification, uh, which is available in a, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, ribbon. Uh, cloud native managed services offering, right? Uh, with that, uh, before I go to the next point, I just want to, uh, you know, uh, Pete, do you want to add anything here that I missed with the virtual C20 part, or do you want to talk about it? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, the switch, the soft switch itself, for anyone that's familiar with Stir Shaken, um, provides a, a lot of requirements or needs to provide a lot of requirements as well. Um, specifically on the origination side, something that's called attestation um, and, and providing a rig ID. And then on the terminating side, reporting uh, validation results to the SIP endpoint. So on C20, Ribbon has made those requirements available on release 19, release 20, and release 21. Some of the, uh, some of the Verstat reporting capabilities are coming in uh, March of 2021, but we are making all of those capabilities available um, on the C20, release 19, 20, and 21 for, and going forward. Great. Thank you, Pete. So before we move on to the, uh, uh, the next topic, right, um, I'd like to point out here is that Ribbon Call Trust leverages, uh, also leverages insights from Ribbon Analytics, right? Uh, uh, that is to determine the trust context and the uh, enhanced reputation scoring function. Uh, uh, which we are talking about here, and uh, which lets us lead into the next uh, topic for discussion, right? So what is advanced intelligence, or what are, what are the offer that we are talking about in terms of advanced intelligence into your fixed voice infrastructure? Um, it is definitely about data enrichment. It is about taking those, uh, you know, just to give you a quick context before we move on, is about taking those raw data uh, from your network your devices and, and the services and uh, uh, that you're running and turning them into, let's say, K KPIs, right, or key performance indicators uh, that you can customize uh, or we can customize and deliver in an interactive dashboard, right, that in turn you can deliver to your customers. Uh, so when we have all these data that are available within the network, then we can quickly identify trends, right, such as poor device performance or capacity exhaustion and uh, proactively fix issues that may or may not be known uh, within your network. Um, so here when we talk about end-to-end -end visibility into fixed voice networks, we are talking about uh, you know taking those data that we are talking earlier from your C20 for example or similar products, uh, soft switch products, and it can also further pull data from multiple other elements right in the network such as the SPCs that, may, that you might have, uh, PSX that you might have, uh, media gateway elements and as such right. Uh, so when you're looking at fixed networks, the things you're focused on is uh, your areas around uh, uh, the, the first box is the network modernization, right? That is applicable to uh, operators transitioning from TDM to IP networks. Uh, and then there is a network collapse wherein you know, there, there are new technologies that has driven these network equipments, right? To be able to handle more and more sets of subscribers eventually and, and also capacity. Uh, in smaller and smaller footprints, right? Uh, and the other side to it is the uh, hybridization, not just the IP transition, or what we are talking about, but when we try to make uh, make the hybrid, make an hybrid network, uh, and adding capabilities like the uh, IMS into your network and moving towards uh, more towards the mobility side, right? So we are going to be pushing into these, and that's where the analytics is a very crucial point in just managing these network, right? So you can see and focus on the equipments, the traffic, and the network in totality. Uh, so in these type of networks, the data is there, and it is growing, and growing very, very rapidly, right? Because of that, uh, you know, we need some tools uh, to help us to actually show us what's happening, and hopefully show us uh, the, the things of interest, right? Um, so let me move on to the next slide. So when you're looking into your network, and uh, try to grab some of the analytics into your network, right, to give you some insights. There are three priorities that you will be looking into. That is, uh, you know, visibility, the agility, and the uh, automation. Uh, the visibility aspect, you need to have that huge level of data being collected, right, but also being able to simplify uh, the data to make it usable in the sense over uh, uh, large networks across the network elements and just all these data, the elements put out there, right? Uh, that allows you to further drill down to the integral level of what was going on versus the big picture or maybe you just want to look at the big picture, right? On the agility side, you need to be able to pull in these information quickly. Processing of these information has to happen quickly too. 
and allowing you to adjust the view you're looking at, uh, the charts you're looking at, and the analysis you're doing. As as many of you know, uh, you know we had massive changes right in traffic pattern this year, uh, based upon what is happening in the world. That cost a lot of adjustment, right, to be done in the networks in a very short order time frame. Uh, you know, so having analytics tools could have made those adjustments quicker, maybe, right, and easier and better adapted, uh, or a lot more information when you made these changes into, right. Um, and and the other side to it is the, uh, the the automation aspect. This is where we need the system automation to do everything from basic alerts uh, and and pointing those issues in the network for you. Uh, to even being able to push in some cases, allowing these uh, type of automation systems to make changes directly on your network, right, without uh, human interaction. And that can be anything from changing, you know, routing skews, changing tech level on trunks, or even sending calls to some sort of disconnect reasons uh, because you want to manage the traffic or even sending it out to some kind of announcements, right? Um, so we, we recommend uh, as Ribbon looking into these three priorities uh, for an uh, analytics engine uh, uh, to be deployed or to help you manage uh, uh, in the network uh, and make it more efficient, right? And lastly, uh, you know, we did a webinar uh, not too long ago and walked through the analytics use cases and demos for fixed voice network uh, in specific to, you know, how uh, we showed uh, uh, how uh, uh, C20 records can be pulled in, we, how operations are done, how security is done. So I would highly encourage you to review those use cases that can be applied in particular to these software solutions and uh, that we are talking about today too. So there's a link there uh, when you're getting these slides uh, in PDF, you can uh, you can look for this uh, uh, demos. So if you all agree on the priorities for your voice network, which we spoke a little earlier, right? So the visibility uh, first and foremost with Ribbon Analytics, uh, you know, can look across all access types. You know whether it's wireless, whether it is fixed through fixed voice or through wireless access or both, uh, Volti, uh, for example, right? Or actual data, whether it is internet-based content. Uh, so when we talk about delivering service assurance for fixed voice and network, you know, network infrastructures, uh, it has to underpin all these functionalities, right? We are looking across all network and all content on those network, and that's a lot, lots and lots of data. Uh, that's a lot of things we are pulling in and really solutions with Ribbon Analytics is the ability to correlate that data, right? And find that content that is critical to adjusting the uh, the use cases that, uh, that, that will be implemented, right, in your network. So as we said earlier, analytic solutions should have massive scalability, right? But at the same time, I have, uh, have the flexibility for you guys, uh, you know, because we are going to do uh, we are going to be doing analysis on number of systems, number of access types, and, and number of different types of networks, right? So what we designed is a very scalable, uh, you know, very adaptable solution that allows us to call the data and select the data uh, that we are most interested to adjust, uh, you know, uh, based on your, the use cases that we are looking into, right? After we have done that, you know, we can design intelligent KPIs, uh, and then we can look into, let's say, the first stage, such as uh, descriptive analytics, describing what we see, and then move into more predictive analytics, let's say, with machine learning, uh, you know, allowing us to do things like resource utilization and optimization, and then lastly, move into the automation aspects, right, wherein we are looking at prescriptive type of analytics. For example, it can send some kind of alerts and, and troubleshooting announcement, uh, something a network engineer has to be looking at, right? So this is ideally, uh, you know, about helping or empowering the network operations team and uh, helping them to solve issues more proactively, right, or rapidly uh, and and allowing them to come out to a, you know, come to a resolution to more, uh, as in more quickly, right? So it's all about, um, empowering the network engineers, the operations team, uh, make your life easier and be more efficient, right? So with that, why why Ribbon, right? Uh, just to wrap this up before we get on to some questions, we have a, a proven portfolio and we are a proven vendor actively working with uh, hundreds of operators across the world, uh, as Pete rightly pointed out too. 
uh, uh, with fixed voice communications and network transformation, you know, we have uh, our experience of collapsing over 3,000 offices, right, and over migration of around uh, or transformation of over 770 legacy switches, right. Uh, and we have the right product evolution strategy like you see here today, and we will have it towards the future to uh, getting into future to help operators migrate to you know virtualization and NFV uh, types of technology advancement, right. And finally, we have the right tools, right people, uh, the process and capability, uh, you know, and we have great uh, partners like you, uh, so customers that we bring along and be your, uh, you know, strategic solution provider, right? Uh, just to, uh, you know, if, if, if so we, we address three or four different areas here. So if you have questions on Virtual C20, uh, if you would like to, uh, you know, talk to us about TS2 Care Upgrade Program or the Nuisance Calling Global Call Mitigation and Stress Shaking Solution, what's available in, in, in with your products like C20, SBCs, etc. in your network, and and what's available as a solution like what I uh, what I spoke about, Urban Call Trust, right? And then if you want to do a demo on analytics, let's say you want to see how it works with your C20 uh, and networks. Uh, fixed voice network, you know, feel free to reach out to your sales team um, and and we can always set up, a, a, you know, a, a demo session or a, a discussion session with you guys, right? Uh, uh, with that, let me open this up for some questions. Uh, there are some contents available here. Uh, you know, once you have a PDF of this charts, you can feel free to look for those uh, content here. Right? It's available in our website too. Um, Pete, do you want to address a couple of questions? Still that, Pete? Sorry about that. Um, yes, I, uh, there are a couple questions here. I've answered a few online here, but I'm having a little trouble with the application. Um, a question here about C15, wondering if uh, C15 is being virtualized as well. Uh, we do not have a plan to virtualize the C15. As I was trying to, as I was sort of saying, the um, between the virtual C20 and the uh, virtual uh, application server itself, we think we uh, can address market needs. Um, and subsequently, you know, there's options in the in the rural space. We can use a, a virtual C20 to it to address some of those needs. Maybe an AS, um, even for C15 customers in future that are looking to get off of, uh, of the hardware platform that it, it provides. You know, there could be uh, C15 to virtual C20 uh, upgrade opportunities in future as well. So I think there's going to be a lot of flexibility as to uh, what we can offer in that space. Um, I also had a question here about deployments. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, there's a question here, are there any planned deployments yet for virtual C20 uh, and or R21? Of course, I can't, you know, care, can't share customer names, but absolutely, we uh, I can share numbers. You know, we have uh, virtual C20 going into two labs already now. We're going to be commissioning those in early January. I didn't mention the R21 GA date. It uh, became GA in uh, the third week of October, right? Um, so uh, we already have virtual C20 going into two uh, large customer labs with um, live deployments planned to be started with one customer at least by March of 2021. Um, we've got R21 upgrades going on already with uh, one existing C20 customer, so upgrading from a release 19 to release 21. And then we've also got the uh, CS2K to uh, to C20 to virtual C20 upgrade event. We've got um, two customers on schedule with that program uh, in the first half of 2021. So there is a lot of movement already on R21 and the various uh, new capabilities that it, uh, that it has to offer. Okay, uh, just one, I'll just pick one question which will probably take less than 30 seconds to answer. I thought it was interesting. So can we forecast capacity uh, with the analytics tool uh, 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 or capacity needs in fixed networks with C20, right? Uh, it's a great question. So we have uh, a POC capability now that we can use uh, machine learning to look at our at your historical data, and then build forecasting models that you can assess at gateway level or trunk group level, right? Uh, or or at the uh, at the data set level that you can process into, right? Uh, that that can show you if you ever uh, you know seen some of the projections like a spike in the charts giving you a score of that confident level or where the traffic is going to be based upon the historical view, right? 
uh, and then you can do some analysis to look at what if scenarios by changing some data variables and even look for some anomaly behaviors, right? That is uh, based upon, let's say, some old past traffic. Um, so yes, the capacity tool for C20 is right around the corner and I would encourage you to reach out to your sales team to get a POC done uh, if you're interested in your lab. Um, with that, I think we are, we still, I mean, we have a number of questions there and I hope we address some of it. If you haven't addressed it, uh, we will be sending a mail directly uh, to all the attendees with those questions and appreciate your your uh, you know all your um, attention today and playing the game I know this is the first time we are trying the game but uh, hopefully we'll get better in, um, in making sure you know there are no glitches right uh, so with that I'm passing it back to Lance thanks Prasanna and uh, thank you Pete and thank you all for attending um, yes we will be sending out an email uh, hopefully by the end of the day it could be tomorrow morning uh, with a link to the replay from today, uh, as well as a link to the PDF of the slides like Prasanna mentioned. So uh, obviously feel free to reply to that email with any questions you may have. Prasanna did mention that we will be sending an email to each of you who asked your questions and we'll, we'll get those uh, addressed for you. Uh, you can always find more information at uh, ribbon.com, rbbn.com, or of course ribboncommunications.com. Plenty of places to uh, contact us there as well. So. Again, thanks so much for playing the game. Uh, thank you for your attention today. And just be on the lookout for that email, uh, likely uh, later this afternoon or first thing tomorrow morning. Thanks again. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful rest of your week. Stay safe and healthy, and we will talk to you all soon.